Hi everyone, this is Anthony of Eccentric Engineer, and we're looking at the uh, first testing of the intermediate injector today. Uh, so far everything seems to be working pretty good. Starts at around 40 psi like the small injector, and uh, I've got it lifting uh, about three feet, two and a half maybe, two and a half to three feet. And uh, I just wanted, to, while I have it here set up, I wanted to show what makes the eccentric engineer injectors special. So, uh, I've seen a few times the question has come up, is it better to install these injectors lifting or non-lifting? And I promise, it doesn't matter. Put the injector wherever you want, high, low, sideways, upside down, it'll still work. So, we're hovering here at around 100 PSI, and I have the valve, uh, tuned to where it'll pick up so it's choked back right now it's not full open and you'll be able to see the water come up through the tube and they have they have quite a bit of a range so I'm still opening it it's injecting more and more water now it's starting to overflow and I can choke it back quite a bit where it'll still inject. This is called throttling an injector and I can throttle it back even further by closing the steam valve. So I'm slowly adjusting the steam valve more and more closed. Now it's dribbling. So that's about as close as I can get it. But throttling an injector is not possible with a quick starting valve. It is only possible with the needle valve on the steam valve. I personally don't really like quick starting valves because it, it, it limits the functionality of your injector. And I am a, I'm a firm believer in allowing an injector to prime. So what I mean by that is I crack the steam valve open and let water entrain into the injector and let it overflow before turning the steam on all the way. So I'll show you what that looks like. So now it's primed, the injector is primed. And now if I open the steam valve the rest of the way, it picks up a little bit more reliably. Almost all full size injectors have at least a priming feature on their steam valve where they can crack the steam open first to let water in and cool everything down before fully opening the steam to start operating the injector. This injector is a little too big for this engine, so I gotta let it uh, cool down here, or heat back up rather. Drop down to 90 pounds. Still isn't bad. This injector I think will be perfectly suited for a lot of medium sized engines, 040s, uh, a lot of the Allen engines, moguls, um, probably even 10 wheelers. It would be perfectly sized. This standard injector, which is comparable to a super scale or rolling cap injector, will work fine on those, but they do cool, cool the boiler down pretty quickly. Uh, so this is um, standard injector is five pints a minute, and this is three and a quarter pints a minute. So you get a, a slower fill that won't cool your boiler down so fast. A lot of people think that injectors cool the boiler down because of the steam consumption, but they actually use very little steam relative to how much water they're putting in. What cools the boiler down is the fact that you're filling the boiler full of 160, 170 degree water. Another feature of these injectors is they are restarting. So, if I run the injector, 
Pump's operating. If I close the steam valve to represent some sort of uh, interruption in the water flow, and then open it back again, it resumes operation. That's called automatically restarting. A lot of injectors, once the water line is interrupted, you have no chance of restarting. The injector will just blow steam back to the water line and uh, overheat the injector and it won't be able to operate again. Well now my boiler is overfilled, so thank you for watching. And uh, you can learn more about these injectors and other products at eccentricengineer.com. I will see you next time.